Since the start of the pandemic, it has been widely reported that vitamin D can help guard against severe COVID-19. While vitamin D is an essential nutrient, there are a number of questions around how much of this vitamin D is needed and how does it exactly help our bodies? Joining us now is um, Dr. Fatmi Alanuri, an Associate Professor, College of Natural Health and Sciences from Zayed University. Hello, Dr. Fatmi, and welcome to Omnia Health Insights. Hello, good morning. Thank you so much, Genevieve. And uh, I would like to um, also thank uh, Rejoy for both of you like arranging this interview and special thanks also to the Omnia Health Insights for you know, taking a uh, good effort to educate uh, the public. Thank you. It's a pleasure, doctor. So my first question is, could you tell us how much vitamin D helps co uh, combat COVID-19? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I think this is a very important question, especially nowadays, Genevieve, like everybody's hearing about the importance of vitamin D in terms of like uh, prevention or like hypothetically prevention, let's say uh, COVID-19 infection. And um, if we want to talk about this role, uh, I want to first like highlight uh, maybe the, the severity of the COVID-19 infection and why is it problematic and usually how it's associated with mortality. Uh, so if we look at the COVID-19 infection, which is caused by the SARS-CoV-2 uh, virus, um, the, the, the actual harm or the actual mortality is triggered by uh, different things. One of them is that it triggers what we call a cytokine storm in the body. So the immune system, um, you know, becomes in such a mess and it uh, exaggerates the response uh, against the, the virus. Uh, so one of the roles of the vitamin D is to actually balance this exaggeration. So it keeps it in check. It keeps our immune system in check um, so that there's a balance between the uh, pro-inflammatory and the anti-inflammatory, um, uh, what we call cytokines in the body. So one of the first functions of vitamin D, and it's a very well established function actually, is that it is an anti-inflammatory substance. So by itself, you know, it's helping the um, um, people who have COVID-19 uh, to, to, you know, overcome the, the infection itself. Now, the second point is uh, due to its fact, uh, this fact being an anticoagulant. Uh, so as we know that also one of the complications that uh, COVID-19 patients get affected with is what we call thrombosis or like formation of clots. And um, so this leads later to aneurysm or might lead to atherosclerosis and, you know, later on some severe complications and may death even. And so um, vitamin D has a very well established role actually as an anticoagulant. So what it does, it actually erodes this clot it dissolves it, it degrades it. And so this is also very important. Um, a third function also um, owes to its fact being an immunomodulatory uh, molecule. So it, uh, you know, modulates the immune system uh, and it helps the immune system. How it helps it, it, um, first of all, like, you know, it supports the proliferation of certain cells, which are in the uh, body, which are called the white blood cells because they are involved immune system. And also um, helps them produce some very beneficial substances that act as like antiviral, antibacterial, uh, antifungal as well. Um, so, so this is why it's like directly involved in the immune system. It really helps our immune system. It boosters our immune system and maintaining a good level of vitamin D is also very good for immunity. Thank you for that information, Dr. Fatmi. So what are the signs and symptoms of vitamin D deficiency? This is actually a very important question, and it's uh, at the same time, it's interesting because um, the signs of uh, vitamin D deficiency and the symptoms could be really very vague. And in fact, vitamin D deficiency um, could be silent, like, you know, uh, people could go with vitamin D deficiency for a long time before really recognizing that they have the vitamin D deficiency. And so sometimes it's not only uh, underdiagnosed or like, mis it's sometimes even misdiagnosed because some of the symptoms are common with like other symptoms, like that could be really nonspecific, maybe like related to stress, for example. And um, um, in fact, vitamin D deficiency 
deficiency can affect um, you know individuals across all ages so it can affect infants children and then uh, you know adults uh, elderly as well uh, in the infants and the children it's a little bit easier because it is uh, marked by what we call the crippling disease or like these bowed legs so you can see the feature and then you know the physician can suspect that there is vitamin D deficiency and they ask for a blood test and so on uh, but in adults it's usually a little bit tricky because as I said like you know it's associated with like these non-specific uh, symptoms so usually something like dizziness fatigue muscle ache you know bone ache um, uh, hair loss uh, you know, all these things like malaise, like fatigue, you know, all these things that people never think that it's related to vitamin D deficiency. It could be related to like, you know, I'm going through like a uh, stressful situation or I could be having some deficiency with a, like some kind of a mineral or like another vitamin, but not like vitamin D. Um, so it could be really very tricky and that's why, you know, I, I highly recommend that people check their blood level, their vitamin D level once per year, at least like just the way they check their cholesterol level and, and uh, you know, uh, check for glucose and all these, uh, good markers. Ah, I see. That's great. Does a lack of vitamin D impact mental health? Absolutely. So, um, you know, the very well established role that a lot of people know about if they hear vitamin D, they immediately think about bone, um, skeletal integrity and, you know, because of its role in um, helping the absorption of calcium. And this is really a very important role. However, like, you know, um, probably the last two decades, we have had uh, a lot of research, very uh, comprehensive research that documented that vitamin D is important not only for for skeletal health but it's important for all you know the body in general because it's associated with protective role in cardiovascular diseases diabetes you know so it's good for the immune system as we talked you know previously about the COVID-19 um, so it has you know it's more into it it's not only like a vitamin it's really like also a hormone uh, it's also a neurohormone so it's very important for you know uh, the the uh, neuronal development and um, this is why a lot of studies have documented also that people who have vitamin D deficiency, uh, they could be at risk of being depressed or the other way around sometimes like, you know, people who are depressed, um, they have also like high risk of becoming vitamin D deficient. So we're not really sure which one would trigger which, but we know that they are closely related. And also um, there's a lot of evidence that shows that vitamin D is involved in the dopamine serotonin pathway. So it triggers all these, you know, uh, neurotransmitters and all these uh, compounds that are uh, important for the development of the brain and also um, is important for neuronal development, as we said. Ah, oh, that's very important. It's good to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. So how many kinds of vitamin Ds are out there and what is the best form to consume it? Um, so there are actually two different forms that we call D2 and D3. Uh, so one is like plant-based and one is animal-based. So one is called co-calciferol and one is called ergocalciferol. And one is more potent than the other. So D3 is almost like around two times more potent than D2. Um, so, I mean, like they can be, um, you can take either D2 or D3, uh, but if you have to bear in mind that if you're going to take D2, you need twice as much, you know, to reach to the D3 level. Uh, so D2 was very prevalent form, you know, for pharmaceutical companies, it's like they like to be, use uh, D2 just to avoid toxicity and all of that. Uh, but nowadays, like, you know, it's mostly D3 because it's more uh, potent, as I mentioned.